well, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. No, we're not leaving the building. <laughs> but we're so thankful for the blessing of the Lord. It is so good. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have expressed your thankfulness to us as pastors. Uh, over the last few weeks, it's been overwhelming, actually, and the Lord is good, and uh, we appreciate that. The Lord bless you. We're going to take a little bit of time this morning, and, uh, and we're going to talk about how to be blessed and what it means to be blessed, just in a general sense, because you can't do a whole lot with that in 40 minutes. But we will. Um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive your blessing upon the word today so that we can impart truth that sets men and women free in every area of life. We, we receive the anointing for that, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God wants his people blessed, and the word blessed is a very common s statement or word that you hear, you know, uh, God bless you, be blessed, uh, well, bless your heart, and whatever. And, and, and if, if, if we stop sometimes and, and, and consider what we're saying and, and, and what it means when we, when we use these, these words, uh, it can mean so many different things. Oh, bless you. Now, that basically means, oh, isn't that sweet, right? Oh, uh, bless you. Somebody, <laughs> somebody might say, uh, well, bless your heart. Now, that means that was cute. Or it might mean, you poor thing. <laughs> well, bless your heart. So the word really, when, when it's used in, in different contexts, is, has kind of lost its meaning. Sometimes it can almost be a swear word. You ever hear anybody say, well, I'm blessed if I know. What word would you think some people would put there? I'll give you a clue. It begins with a D. So that's what we call euphemism. Euphemism is when you put a, a, a more palatable word in the place of a curse word or something. Euphemism. For those of you who don't know, when you say, oh, my gosh, you're saying, oh, my God. When you're saying, what the heck? You're saying, what the hell? All right? That's what that's all about. So, you know, hey, you want to euphemize? That's between you and God. I really don't care. I try to stay away from it myself, but we all do some of it. Amen? Don't get under condemnation. Don't get under bondage. But the bottom line is we need to know what it means to be blessed. And how can I be blessed? Because blessing to me is not, oh, bless your heart, you know. And bless you, but bless you in Jesus' name. Be blessed. So basically, to be blessed is to be is to be made holy or consecrated. That's the bottom line with that. Now, for that to happen, the presence of God has to come. The power of God has to come. The favor of God has to come in your life. The provision of God come in your life. The healing of God come in your life. The provision of God come in your life. Blessed. I'd like that we, we could all get to the place where, where we, 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 at least most of the time, carry that word respectably. 
And when you, you speak to somebody, I bless you in Jesus' name. You're actually invoking the power and the anointing of God into that person's life. I want that God's power would be released in you and that your children would walk blessed. You, you, your finances would be blessed. Your physical body is delivered from every ailment. I want that God shows up and changes your circumstances. Be blessed. Everybody shout, be blessed. Thank you for that. I receive that. Amen. Be blessed. The, the term being blessed generally in a nice way with most everybody means, well, you, you, you receive happiness, prosperity, health, and, and you know, like a, a, a blessed family, home, a blessed marriage. Amen? That's, uh, that's being blessed. It's a general sense of being blessed. And God wants us blessed. The, the picture some people have of God is that, you know, he picks one to be blessed and somebody else to be cursed. But God's desire is that every soul, every individual be blessed. To have his presence. To have his, his glorious presence and power released in their lives. In every area of their life. That's God's will. The Apostle John in 3 John verse 2 said, I would or I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He's saying, I declare blessing over you that you would prosper. Now, the word prosperity, of course, we're so flesh, carnal minded, we think, whenever we think prosperity, we think money. You can have $10 billion in the bank and be as poor as a mouse in a church that's been closed for 50 years. That's true. But prosperity means the blessing of God in your life so that, that, yes, finances are there, but health is there. And you have, you have a confidence in God that tells you that it doesn't matter. Remember the song we sang a few minutes ago? I thought, that, man, that was written so many years ago. Leaning on Jesus, safe and secure, you know, all alarm. You notice the word alarm? We've seen a lot of alarm in the last year or so and even in the last week. But safe, secure, regardless of what kind of alarms go off, everything is okay. That, my brother and sister, is prosperity. I'll tell you, when, when somebody pushes the button and a nuclear bomb is headed towards Canada and the United States, uh, money is not going to fix that. Hello? Having three cars and, and, and two motorcycles and, 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 and a, a million dollar home won't fix it. Being the, mo the most popular person in school or in church or on the job or in your town won't fix it. But knowing God who can take the nuclear bomb in his hand and extinguish it. Is all you need. That's prosperity. Amen. The rest of the perks are wonderful. Amen. Bring them on. That's good. They're from God. That's good. Now, the scriptures, and I don't want to take a lot of time of this because, but I, I, I remind myself that if I don't finish today, we can do it again some other time. Amen. But the scriptures talk a lot about the blessing of God. And, and what to do to bring the blessing of God. So it seems to me, if you call yourself a Christian, then we ought to be looking for the opportunity and the means of being blessed of God in the way that God wants to bless us. Don't you think so? And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. I just want to look at a few scriptures, and there are a lot of them. So I'm going to take a few and, and just read them. 
for our own benefit. But I want to mention at the beginning, the greatest blessing you could ever have in the whole world and in your whole lifetime is to be forgiven of your sins and cleansed of your sins. That is, that is, where, that is where the rubber meets the road. That's the crux of the matter right there. Because outside of that, you're living a life that's going to end in misery and despair. But once you know that you've been forgiven, you know that you've been redeemed, you know you've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. When you know that, that's the greatest blessing you could ever have, the greatest one. And, of course, uh, in, in Romans chapter 4, there are a lot of scriptures we could use. I choose to use these. In Romans chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8, it says this, Blessed are they, there's the blessing right there, amen? Now, you know, we, we use the term blessed, it means blessed. It just sounds better poetically. Blessed are those. It's the same thing, okay? So if you hear me say blessed are those, that's how we do it in the King James. Uh, <laughs> Blessed or blessed is he whose sins are forgiven and are not imputed or counted against him. Isn't that beautiful? You can find a place and a standing where God is not counting up your sins anymore. Sounds good to me. I mean, talk about being blessed to know that God is not marking my sins against me, not imputing, charging them to my account anymore. It sounds good to me. I receive that. Everybody say, I receive that. If you don't, we'll pray for you. Verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute. Or charge with sin. How blessed can you be when God says no? The devil comes up and says, do you know what he did? Do you know what she did? Do you know what she was like last week? Do you, do you know? Do you know? And God says, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because you're... Sins and your iniquities are not being counted or charged to your account anymore. And I'm telling you here this morning, if you have not found that place, if you have not established yourself in that place, then you need to run for cover. You need to run to get into that place. It's called the secret place of the Most High, underneath the shadow of the Almighty, somewhere where you make declaration that the Lord is your God. He's your refuge. He's your fortress, and you totally and completely trust in Him. That's what we're talking about. It all begins with trusting Him. To make you free from sin. Free from sin. Born again. You say, well, I don't understand that. I mean, come on, if I sin, I sin, I'm in trouble. It depends. Everybody say, it depends. It depends on how you're walking. If your faith is towards God, and your confidence is in the blood that was shed on Calvary, and you maintain that faith daily, then nothing you do will be held against you. Your mistakes, your failures, however great and however numerable they may be, will not be held against you. Let me read you a scripture verse. Like I said, there are a lot, but I just want to kind of like stick with one or two. 1 John 1 and 7. Everybody knows this scripture, but I'm going to read it just in case you don't. But if we walk in the light... I could stop there and preach a while. If we, if, you know what? We've got a grace message out now, and I'm not against grace. God, have mercy. Without grace, where would we all be? 
But be careful that you don't take grace as an excuse to live a slipshod life that doesn't even respect God anymore, makes him just another buddy. You can put him in any box you want. It doesn't matter. And you can do anything you want and forget about God. No, that, that, that don't work. But if, everybody say if. If we walk in the light, there's this responsibility for us to walk in the light. You know, I don't know if I can do that. Grace will help you. I don't know if I can measure. Grace will help you. You see, it's, it's, we can never reach the place, and we must never reach the place where, well, I can't, so I'm not going to try. When you were, when you were anywhere from 9 to, to 15 months old, because some are faster than others, you were learning to walk. And your parents would, 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 would sit down, and, and they'd, they'd, they'd say, come to daddy. True word? Come to daddy. And you were over there, and you're thinking, yeah, you're not thinking much because you're only, you know. But there's this instinctive fear. But there's a boldness that gets a hold of you, and you leave. And you fall flat on your face after the first step. What does daddy do? Gotcha. Can anybody see what I'm talking about? You accept Jesus as your personal savior. You go out of church on Sunday morning or Sunday night. And the next day all hell breaks loose. And nothing, nothing is the way you thought it was going to be. And you're flat on your face. What do you think your heavenly father is yearning to do? He runs to you and picks you up and says, come on, let's try this again. Angie, is that good preaching or what? Woo! Yeah! Do you understand what I'm talking about? I've been born again. I've got a father in heaven that loves me so much he won't let me stay down. He won't let me go under. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Come on, I got to sing my testimony. I don't know anybody else. That saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. Aren't you glad for that, brother? But now, but now, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. I don't know about you, but, but I got myself preached happy, and I was happy when I started. Glory to God. I, I said glory to God. I'm talking about being blessed. This is the initiation. This is the beginning. And come on, if this is the, if this is the beginning, can you imagine when the skies break abroad, and Jesus comes back to just take all of his children in his arms. And he's capable of doing that. And receive them eternally into a blessed filled eternity. Can you even start to imagine what it's going to be like? And you'd mess it all up for some stupid, dumb, little fling type life here? Give me a break. All right, I was reading the first part of the verse here, so we'll go back to it. That's how you read the Bible. I said, that's how you read the Bible. But, but if you walk in the light, as he, is in the light. You see, we, we have no, we have no connection with. We have no affiliation with darkness. Right there is enough to say, when it comes to why we don't bother with Halloween, it don't make us better. 
It's our choice. You understand that? Don't ever look down on somebody because, because they're, they're, they're celebrating Halloween. Most of you probably did one time. Don't, don't, don't fret about that. Just do what you know. And what you know is where you're supposed to go. All right? But, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and in him is no darkness. We have fellowship one with another. Wasn't it beautiful this morning when everybody just, just, just hugged or shook hands and smiled and said, God bless you. Good to see you. Isn't that nice? Bless your heart. <laughs> but but <laughs> seriously, it was cool. It was really, really nice. Really, really nice. He, has, he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. Now, it don't stop there. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth. It's a progressive word. It doesn't say cleansed you, past tense, but cleanseth you. It's a continual thing. So when you fall on your face on Monday morning, or it may be Sunday night before you go to bed after you get out of church, that cleanseth is applicable. That cleanseth is there. He's cleansing you every day. He keeps you where you cannot be clean. He keeps you where you cannot go in the holiness and righteousness. He makes it possible for you to be right with him. But listen, come on, you can't throw this out. What was the first part of the verse? But if... We walk in the light. Now, I mean, I'm not stupid. I'm not the most intelligent person in the world either. So I'm somewhere in between. The converse of that, obviously, would be, if you don't walk in the light, you, you don't get that cleansing. Does that make any sense to you? So... I'm going to make every effort that I can to walk in the light. Yeah, but supposing you try and you can't. We already dealt with that, but let me say it again. Grace is greater than your lack of ability. All God is wanting, all God is wanting is for you to just take the step. Make the effort. To do right. We talked about last week when I spent an hour and 20 minutes preaching. <laughs> the Christians walk. I mean, there's something you got to do. You got to walk. Walk. If, if, I, if I got up this morning and sat on the side of the bed, I did for a minute, and, and, and did nothing else, I'd still be there and you'd be here. So when you accept Jesus, you, you start walking spiritually. You make steps. And he's in the light, so you're going to step towards the light. He's righteous, so you step towards righteousness. He's holy, so you step towards holiness. Can you see that? We, we make effort. We take steps towards him. Listen, the apostle James said, draw near to God. That's taking a step. Draw near to God. And what does he do? He will draw near to you. This is written to Christian saints. All of these scriptures is written to Christians. Some people are saying, well, you know, well, that's when you get saved here, 1 John 1, 7. No, 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 no. The context is very clear. This is written to believers. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we've got fellowship. It's a walk. And his blood continually cleanses us from sin. 
Now, that's point number one. I only have nine. Bless your heart. <laughs> How long have we been, Matthew? Huh? 25 minutes and 21 seconds. I'm, on, I'm running out of time. I got 10 minutes. But listen, if all we say this morning is grab a hold of the blessing of having your sins forgiven and understand where you are, understand where God is and how this works together, we're co-workers with him. We're running with him. We're flowing with him. We're working with him. We're his children. We're chips off the, he's not old. He's, he's the ancient of days, but he's not old. We're chips off God. Seriously, we're his children. People, people see me, and they, they know I'm Gar Rogers' son. I don't understand, but the, you see him, you know I look something like him. They see my boys, and the evidence is there that they belong to me. And Jones over there saying, what about me? We are one flesh. We were reminded of that in the wedding yesterday. Isn't it good to see Dean and Donna here today? God bless you. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless your heart, too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you see, when, when, the world sees, when, the world, when the world sees us, there's a difference between you and the world if you're a born-again believer. When the world sees us, they ought to be able to say, well, that's one of those God people. <laughs> Who do you think you are, God? I'm his son. Right? So if you see resemblance, oh, I'm really proud of that. There's a resemblance, isn't there? Isn't, it, isn't that awesome? There's a resemblance. You see, my, you see my father in me? That's a compliment. You see my heavenly father in me? That's the best compliment you could ever give me. And I'm sure you all feel the same. Somebody say amen. 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 So you see, the initial start of this thing, and, and, and I was thinking when I was getting ready to come to church morning, I was thinking about, like, what will I do with this? Because there's a lot of stuff here once you get into it. And I said, you know what? I'll preach my introduction. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing. Because, because the introduction to being blessed of God is, is to have what introduces you to him. The cleansing. The receiving of his son. Contrary to what a lot of popular opinion around the world and in Hollywood is today, there ain't no other way to God except Jesus. People want to make you feel intimidated by their religious philosophies as to the fact that, that, that whether it's Buddha or Mohammed or, or, it, or Confucius or any of these guys that are dead and gone and buried, you know, they want to make you feel, why would you think your religion is any better? Because the religion that I am supposed to be a part of revolves around someone who is alive, which gives me more than a religion. It gives me experience and relationship. That's the difference. That's the difference right there. Mohammed is dead. Buddha is dead. Confucius is dead. And the other idiots around the world that are confessing and saying that they are Jesus reincarnate, they're just fools. And you can quote me on that. And God knows what I'm saying here. Because he called them fools as well. 
Jesus himself said in the last days, there will be those who will, who will say, look, here is Christ. Or look, there is Christ. He said, but don't listen to him. Because he said, when I come back, it will be like the lightning from the east to the west. You're going to see it. You're going to know it. You're going to hear it. So be ready. Be ready. I'm not going to preach this particular point this morning, but when I get back at this again, one of the, one of the declarations of being blessed is to watch. I'm just going to say it. Blessed is he who watches. That's all I'm going to say about that. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? You know, I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised going to going to uh, church in the back of a pickup truck on the Sunday school and not happy about it. Sometimes I go to church in the back of a pickup truck sitting on, on dad's old brown painted toolbox. We still have that. I don't know if, if John's got it or Jason or who, who's got it. Somebody brought it from Tony Gate. And, uh, but not happy about it. And but they made sure I stayed in church. It's important to make sure your kids stay in school. If they miss school, you get them back in there, don't you? Well, hello. It's important you make sure your children stay in church. Because church is God's idea. He's proven it over and over and over. And he's not intimidated by anybody who's got other ideas. So I was kept in church, and, and I went to church. When our family went to church, I went to church. When I got into my teens, I thought, this, this is not where it is. I want to go where it is. So I went where I thought it was, and it didn't take real long before I found out that's not where it is. <laughs> Little Angie over here, bless her heart. <laughs> she was talking about back then. She said, I never smoked, never drank, never done any of that stuff. Bless your heart. Isn't that awesome? But that's wonderful. That's a great thing to be able to say. I wish I could say it. But I did smoke a bit, and I did drink a bit. I, I, I know what it's about. Never ever did drugs because then nobody offered them to me. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, was a dumb, <laughs> there, was, there was a dumb time in my life that if they had offered, I would have tried it. So I'm not going to say, hey, never done drugs. No, I, I didn't, never, never got offered them until I was smart enough to know the difference. But when I was dumb, I tried everything that came along. I even took the, <laughs> we, even, we even tried to take hubcaps off the police cars just for what we used to call them, devilment. <laughs> I mean, they chased me all around town, me and my buddy, who now is a retired police officer, and I'm a pastor. But the police chased me all over town. They couldn't catch me. I knew the place better than they did, so all I needed was a little bit of space, and I could be out of their sight and gone. <laughs> Sometimes. So you see, I, I'm not like, I was mama's boy, trust me. When she was in her 70s, even before her mind started to slip, I was it. But I wasn't like a mama's boy as such so that I couldn't do anything wrong. But there are times, and I just sit down and I remember where I came from and where I could have been. And I just say, thank you, Lord. 
Because I was headed in a very, very wrong direction. But he got a hold of my heart. Amen? I mean, after we got married, I was still goofing around. I used to go away to work. And it's something about, am I, am I 10 minutes up yet? I got five. I used to go away to work, and, you know, I'd take $20 for food back then, 42 years ago. We were married 43. Uh, that was good for a week. And I come home with $50, mostly change, because we'd be <laughs> playing poker. And it and, and seems like people who, who come out of Christian backgrounds, they've got to push it to the limit. You know, they get involved, and, and, and people who are raised in this stuff, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. But people who come out of Christian-oriented ori- situations, they've got to push it, push it, because I've got to prove that I, I'm cool too, right? So I'm, I used, we used to paint tanks, oil tanks. We could do a 120-foot diameter tank in one day. Me and Ed were good at that. I'd want to get the cards out on top of the tank and play a little bit of poker. It was an obsession to me. But I got over it. Now, I don't condemn people who play solitaire and all that stuff. Go for it, man. Have fun. I don't even like see the cards anymore because they almost got me. I remember we were doing this thing one time in a hotel room, myself and Ed and two or three other guys. And, and I used to always be winning, and I started losing. I said, okay, guys, just for the experience. Right now it cuts off. But let's just say I didn't cut this off and let it go. I kept on playing. I lost my car and everything else that I owned. Not in reality, but if I had kept going. That helped me wake up a little bit. That's, the, that's, that's, that's where the devil wants us. That's where I was headed. But Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. Amen? It's been changed. I've been changed from the inside out. I don't want to even think where I would be today if I didn't find him and he didn't find me. And I know there's a bunch of you here. You were worse than me. But the bottom line is this. If you've never, ever smoked or drink, and, and that's, a, that's the best way for it to be. It doesn't make us any better. We still need that cleansing. We still need the blood of Jesus. We still need to be brought into this family. And the great blessing of being able to say, I've been born again. I've been saved, cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If, 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 if there's any blessing, if you had to choose one out of everything else that's available, that's it right there. That's it right there. Bow your heads with me. Father, thank you so much for loving the unlovable. For helping us, Lord, when we couldn't help ourselves. For making available to us this great salvation, this great opportunity to know the God of the universe. If we got what we deserved, Lord, we know we would be banished from your sight and forever forgotten. We'd be crying, the harvest is past and my soul is not saved. But thank you for opening the door. Thank you for knocking on our door. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. And I pray that every person here this morning, you know every heart in this place, you know every person, I ask you in Jesus' name that you would make it clear to all of us today that we need the Lord Jesus. We need to receive the blood that he shed on Calvary to cleanse us and make us totally free from sin. 
And we need to walk in that daily trusting him. Trusting him to keep us right in his sight so that when Jesus comes, we rejoice as we go with him for eternity.